we all go through what I call big T and little T traumas. Mm. And it's how we handle them that matters more than anything else, which is why I've adjusted my what makes me happy from how much money I make or how many uh, goals I achieve to how can I be happy today. Hi, everyone. Welcome here to Go All In Show on ABC 15. My name is Nim Stant, and today I'm super excited and honored to welcome our special guest here with us, Tim Shore, one of the world top human behavior specialists, author of so many books, Get Out of Your Own Way, One Believe Away, right? And Tim, wow, thank you so much for coming here and welcoming the house. Uh, it's so uh, great to be with you, Nim, and an honor to be on your show today. Wow. I mean, just to be with you and a few weeks ago, I'm just like, look into all your works, Tim. I mean, this is like great impact to the world, not just for those company and CEO, but all of general audience who want to really improve and developing from the mind to how to live. Um, let's, let's talk about... What is your backstory, Tim? Like, be, where were you before you get into learning and, and improving all the things that are happening about our belief? What, what did you do before? Where were you? Well, I was just a kid struggling with anxiety and low self-esteem and insecurity and never quite feeling good enough mm -hmm. and having all kinds of crazy experiences growing up with friends that would be friends with you one day and then they'd be, you know, act like your arch enemy the next day. And when I was uh, 12 years old, my dad was a electrician in a steel mill and there was an explosion and he got burned really bad. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, my brain started developing a belief and I didn't know it, but developing a belief that bad things could happen at any moment. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't play life to win. You got to play not to lose, right? How do I not lose? How do I not get hurt? Uh -huh. That creates so much insecurity, so much fear, so much anxiety. And, uh, and I just kept feeling more and more anxious over the years. And uh, when I graduated high school, I thought I'm going to go to school for psychology and figure this stuff out because mm -hmm. I need to figure out how to be able to believe in myself and feel good about myself. And, and, uh, and so that was 32 years ago, I made that decision. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking for the cure for anxiety and the cure for insecurity ever since. And I have found them. So now I've, I've spent my life uh, sharing what I've learned and teaching people uh, how their unconscious mind works and how their beliefs work and how to upgrade how they feel and behave, you know, really fast, mm -hmm. faster than most people would even believe is possible. Tim, what do you think? Like, how can we put this in the school, you know, like educate younger kids because you were 12 and then you have to like figure it out on your own until you, you know, uh, grow older and then you like figure it out and come in that you're going to learn this and you're going to go to school for this. How can, what, what do you think, just in your opinion, how can we like put this lesson in school? That's actually a great question. <laughs> and, and you can find the answer to anything if you ask the right question. So that was a very good one. And we have the in this last decade, we've been focusing, I say we, I mean, as a as a country, we've been focusing a little bit more on emotional intelligence, yeah. which, you know, many countries do not do that, including America. And so uh, we've been starting to teach people, you know, how to respect themselves more so that they can respect others more and how to be more compassionate and aware of how our words and our actions affect others. And so it's a really good start. It's nowhere close to where it needs to be, but it's a really good start. I would think it, as this evolves and as we continue to use technology, there will be more ways that we're able to teach people how their mind works, how their unconscious mind works, their conscious mind, how what they focus on, they move towards, how what they imagine in their mind influences them, how what they hear around them or what they see in their environment is influencing them. Uh, and so anybody that's been studying personal development, this is obvious. But for 99% of the population, these are secrets and insights that people are not aware of. Hmm. We just don't know how their mind works. So we accidentally sabotage ourselves yeah. or we're running our lives based on the beliefs that were developed when we were eight years old. 
Yeah. And so we've still got that little child inside of us calling the shots in a lot of ways. And you can tell when people get angry, that yeah. kid comes out. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And, so. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, it's not just for kids that need to learn, but for us too, even though we, we think we know a lot, but they always will to learn. Mm -hmm. and, and talking about fear, a lot of people, and, and I want to target entrepreneur at this interview, during this interview, um, a lot of entrepreneurs, we, you know, we, we are so creative. That's why we want to be our own boss. But um, there's a lot of challenges and fear and, you know, it's leading to self-sabotage and not a lot of people get over it and overcome it. How can we overcome that? Yeah, being an entrepreneur takes a serious amount of personal growth and courage, mm. you know, to feel the fear, to have amazing amounts of uncertainty and to still keep chasing your dreams anyway and then learning how to stay focused and learning how to not chase all the shiny objects and learning how to stay resilient and keep yourself going and motivated when things aren't working or people don't believe in you you know and the instability of making a lot of money and then not making any money and then yeah. up and yeah. down and up and down it is really brutal in a lot of ways but also beautiful in a lot of ways because you have to become somebody to be able, you have to grow inside to be able to experience more prosperity and inner peace. And it's, some people experience that prosperity, but they don't have inner peace. Yeah. Some people have the inner peace, but they never experience prosperity. And so being able to have both is really a challenge. It's an art and a science. And there's plenty of people that say they have the answers and the secrets and everything else. But I have found that uh, it really takes a lot of maturity, a lot of personal growth and believing in yourself and getting rid of the fears of not being good enough, the fears of being an imposter, and really developing self-love and self-acceptance. And self-love and self-acceptance, I believe, are the two keys that really allow us to continue to pursue our goals. And not just to be happy when we achieve our goals, but to be happy when we're not. Yeah. You know, to be happy, even if we feel, brace yourself, Nim, to be happy, even if we're not making, if we don't feel like we have momentum. Yeah. And momentum is everything for entrepreneurs. Are we making progress? Not am I happy, am I sad, but am I making progress? Mm. We're so afraid that if we're not making progress, then everything's going to fall apart. And yeah. so it, I call it achiever syndrome. It keeps us from being relaxed or being happy or feeling at ease or chasing pleasure because we're so busy trying to avoid the pain of mm. failure, the pain of judgment, the pain of uh, being afraid that, you know, all our deepest fears are actually accurate. You know, I really I'm not really good enough to be able to pull this off or take it to the level that I want. And so I found that really self-love and acceptance yeah. gives you that sense of peace that allows you to show up each day happy. And the happier you are, the more successful you seem to be. See, I love when you say like, we have to become, you know, we have to become different person, you know, in order to get something that we never have before, right? To achieve yeah. something. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about one belief away. Like, what is it? What does it mean, one belief away? So for years, I facilitated over 15,000 individual hypnosis coaching sessions over. It took me a couple of decades to do that. Wow. And so one hour at a time, one person at a time, 15,000 times people would come in for a variety of goals. And I found that when we figured out what the belief was that was holding them back, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. You know, I'm not smart enough. Things don't work out for me. I'm not lucky. You know, whatever the belief was, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of rejection. I'm afraid people are going to abandon me. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that people are going to realize that I'm not as smart as I pretend to be online. And so I have that imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. There was always a belief that was formed when they were a kid mm -hmm. that set that up, that set that pattern of fear and insecurity up. Mm -hmm. And when we would go and we would upgrade that belief from I'm not good enough to I am, from I'm not worthy of love to I am worthy of love and I'm going to start loving myself more today. When we created that shift, immediately their behavior improved. Immediately they started thinking in a way that was more supportive and encouraging. Mm -hmm. Immediately they started feeling more motivated and started taking positive action. 
Mm. We didn't have to change all the negative symptoms. They come in with a, a list of here's what's going wrong and here's what's not working. And But we didn't have to go through that list. We upgraded the belief. We started at the foundation and it shifted what people focused on. You know, whatever you believe, your mind is going to pay attention to that set of information because your mind likes to be right. So if it thinks you're not good enough, then it's going to find all these past memories of, of evidence to prove that you're right. You're not good enough. Well, that didn't work and that didn't work. If you believe that you are good enough, your mind will pay attention to a new set of information that will start validating that you are enough, right? So that's why it's so important to focus on the beliefs that we have because it, in its essence, causes your brain to pay attention to different information. And when you do that, it allows people to have breakthroughs so quickly even if they had struggled for years, even if they had been in personal development for years. Yes. I've worked with a ton of healers and a ton of coaches that still have the same insecurities and they've been to every Tony Robbins seminar and, yes. they, and they still have the same things that they're struggling with because they never got to that core belief, that core fear. So mm -hmm. you're just one belief away from having a really big transformation in your life. Okay, I'm asking this question for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I... I knew what I used to believe. I used to believe that I wasn't good enough. I'm a girl came from third world country when I first moved here. I didn't speak English. And like I used to believe that I wasn't smart enough even like drive on the same street with any American's car on the street. Mm -hmm. Like that belief. Yeah. And, and, and now that belief is gone. Uh -huh. I believe it's gone. <laughs> uh -huh. But um, how can I find, because like, I, I can see my business start to take off, but it's not where I want to be yet. So, mm -hmm. so there must be some root, some root of belief, right? That I did not have a discover yet. So how can we even like dig deeper and discover what is, what is it that we haven't find? And it's like get in our way. So a lot of times we have this idea that we should be more successful than we are right now. Okay. Right? Or that it should have happened 10 years ago. Okay. Right? It's, it's not happening on our timeline. And that robs us of our happiness. Mm. I think that sometimes what we want to do is adjust the goal, right? Because the goal should be to, to be happy today and to get from today instead of just trying to get through today so we can achieve some monetary goal, mm. right? Because that's what usually people say until I make $5 million, yes. I'm not successful. Right. Yeah. Until I've been on stages all over the world, I can't be happy. Yeah. And that is what sabotages our ability to be happy and to attract more opportunities that would bring that goal to us. Mm -hmm. Right. When we are stressed, when we're asking a, a lousy question like, what's wrong with me? Why don't I have this? How come I'm not as good as everybody else? Then it causes your mind to find evidence to say, well, you know, it's because of this and because of that. And then it's you're not focused on those opportunities that will take you to that next level. You're focused on the reasons why you can't get there. So I'll tell you a quick story as you asked me this before the interview. So I decided to write the One Belief Away book with my buddy Joe Vitale because he's 15 years older than me and he's got he's just been down the road farther and he's very insightful. And I remember we were having a conversation and this is the moment when I decided Joe has to help me finish this book. Okay? Mm -hmm. I wanted him to finish this, the, the final chapters of this book, right? So I said, Joe, do you ever think that some people are just luckier than others? Because mm. in that moment, that's how I was feeling. I'm just not as lucky. I'm as smart as anybody else. I meet some of these people and I'm like, I'm way smarter than them. How come they have this and I don't, right? That comparison. And I said, are some people just luckier than others? And Joe thought for a second and then he said, well, there's a lot of victimhood in that question. Wow. That's what I did. I went, whoa. <laughs> I had this whole reaction in my mind, like everything froze for a moment. And I thought, whoa, am I being a victim right now? That's impossible. I wrote the book on Get Out of Your Way. There, I can't be still being a victim. I can't still be acting like poor me. You know, I've worked on myself. But in fact, that's what was happening. I was feeling sorry for myself because mm -hmm. it hadn't happened for me. Although I had been on TV 50 times, I did the TED talk, I wrote books, I've, you know, know all these cool people, but in my mind, it didn't matter. 
All that matters is what I didn't have, not what I had already accomplished. Yeah. And that was my trap. Then Joe said this, and it really blew my mind. He said, Tim, let's say there are lucky people in the world. Why don't you just decide to be one of them? Oh my goodness. That's I can't think I mean. of this advice by myself, just so you know. <laughs> Nobody can. That's why we need each other. We're interdependent creatures. We need each other, right? Yeah. Most entrepreneurs are solo entrepreneurs. We're trying to do it all by ourselves. You got to have coaches. You got to have collaborations. You've got to have people in your network or in your sphere of influence that are helping you. I don't want to do anything by myself anymore. You know, everything that I've been doing, I've been teaming up with amazing people and and doing programs with them. Chris Widener and Randy Gage and Joe Vitale and, you know, all these people that I wanted to partner up with. So Joe said, because um, I don't want to do it by myself anymore. And uh, and so when Joe said that, I thought that was amazing. I mean, wow, I'm just going to decide to be lucky. And because I decided that I'm lucky, I upgraded a belief. Instead of focusing on why isn't it not happening for me, I focused on, I'm a lucky person. What would a lucky person do? What would be a big, bold move that a lucky person would go for? And I thought, I'm going to get a hold of Les Brown. I always wanted to meet him. I was scared to death that he wouldn't like me, which is more insecurity, right? Why would Les want to talk to me? <laughs> but I, I ended up getting a hold of Les. And when we first met, we talked every day for two weeks in a row. No, he was calling me at nine o'clock at night. Hey, Hello, great one. For a while, I didn't think he knew my name because he just kept, hello, great one. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Les. You know, like, ah, talking to Les, you know. <laughs> and then Les hooked me up with Brian Tracy and then, you know, and then Ken Blanchard. And then, I mean, the doors flew open and I was like, this is amazing. And now, you know, I'm, I'm talking to Dennis Waitley on the phone, you know, hanging out, talking to Dennis. He's been mentoring me. And I mean, it was like blowing my mind, all the people that I met because I shifted an idea in my mind, because beliefs are just ideas, they're just opinions, they're not facts. And I shifted that idea that I'm lucky and all of a sudden oh, it opened these doors. And then of course I took action. I, I had to find Les's cell phone. I had to uh, provide a lot of value first, right? To make that impression. I had to make the phone calls a couple of times because the first couple of times I called, I didn't get a hold of Les. It took me several months, right? I had to stay persistent. I had to keep putting it in, uh, putting that action in, but then it created that breakthrough. But even then, knowing all those people, I did this global legend summit. I brought all of them together at the same time, which was absolutely extraordinary. You know, I had like 16 of the best speakers in the world and I teamed them up to have conversations. Mm. So I had Brian Tracy and Les Brown hanging out. I had Bob Proctor and Dennis Waitley hanging out. You know, I just kept doing it over and over with all these amazing people, Tom Ziegler and Ken Blanchard, you know, hanging out, <laughs> right? And uh, it was just absolutely amazing. But when that was over and the Legend Summit wrapped up, we did our last one in this last January of 2021, my mind went back to, yeah, but what have you been doing lately? You know, you haven't been on the Today Show yet. You haven't done a TED talk lately. <laughs> you know, you haven't. Done. Oh my goodness. And it started going back to now I know all these amazing people that I grew up listening to. I could call any one of them on my phone, but my brain's like, yeah, but that's what you did. Yeah. But but you don't have, you know, a hundred keynotes booked, mm. even though we just went through a pandemic and they're finally starting to rebook. But my brain's like, yeah, but yeah, but right. And I bet your brain does that too. When you look at all the success you've had, <laughs> all the people. Yeah. I mean, look how amazing you are. Yeah. You are a powerful woman that came from a third world country where you didn't even know the language or if you were going to be able to drive on our crazy highways. Right. Yep. And look at what you've accomplished. Look at how amazing you are and how you've turned out and what you've been able to do. So obviously, Nim, you are one of these lucky people as well. And now you're attracting all these superstars into your life. Why? Because you are one. I'm speechless. I, let's let's end this. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> like, wow. I mean, again, like your example of not not about like how many people you interview and how it's like 16, you know, that like you put together, but overcoming your own self-sabotage, seriously, Tim. And this is what I love like about talking to to you all, like who already works so much in, in the mind. But Tim, 
we have done a lot and and overcome a lot of self sabotage, and then when the life hit hard and the darkness come in mm. and and the dark night of the soul and i always ask this question i asked dr joe this question too and we almost cry mm. like how can we like just tell ourselves like you know what get back up don't get in your way just one believe away <laughs> like yeah. but i don't want to do it you know like if, if the mind said but i don't want to do it i don't want to think good and positive anymore because <laughs> No. <laughs> yes. What else yes. should you do? I love your questions. This is the stuff that I like to talk about the most. Not all the happy, shiny, successful stuff that people promote on social media, but the days when you don't want to get out of bed, when you're sick of promoting, posting, trying to create another funnel. You know, when you're trying to figure out how am I going to make more money, or how am I going to get out of this credit card debt, or how am I going to pay my rent? You know, when COVID hit, I lost 90% of my business, like overnight, and that's happened a couple of times. You know, in 26 years, when uh, 9/11 almost wiped out my practice, uh, 2009 when the stock crash, you know, and the housing, you know, mess happened. Uh, so there's been, and now a world pandemic. So there's been a lot of uh, Things that happen that are completely out of our control that are not fair. We all go through what I call big T and little T traumas, mm. and it's how we handle them that matters more than anything else. Which is why I've adjusted my what makes me happy from how much money I make or how many uh, goals I achieve to how can I be happy today? How can I make sure that I'm feeling peaceful today? It's a very different goal for me than I ever had before, mm -hmm. because my self worth was connected to my net worth, <laughs> you know, and and uh, and so, uh, so I've had to change that around. And I think that um, when we are really scared, when we're really frustrated, when we're really doubting ourselves, when we are looking at the success that other people seem to have, which trust me, I've hung out with a lot of super successful people. And they don't have very much more figured out than than we do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they have the ups and the downs. When I was doing my interviews for the book with Joe, he was going through a divorce. You know, we had a very serious conversation, and it started off with, you know, Joe, you're the law of attraction guru. How come you're having a divorce? I mean, that was yeah. a very painful way to start it out. But Joe was so honest and so vulnerable. You know, he has such a big heart that he's like, let's go there. And we had a really powerful conversation about it because bad things are going to happen to all of us. And sometimes the motivators are going to feel uninspired and we're going to feel down. Nobody's up 100% of the time. If they say they are, I'm quite suspicious of that. Yeah. You know. So, But in those moments, you go back to your tools that keep you going. So you listen to podcasts like yours, right? Or mine, How to Be Mesmerizing. You uh, listen to the audiobooks. You crank up the music. You hang around really cool people that are inspiring. You don't hide by yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to create that environment, create that network, create people, hire coaches. When I was feeling down from the pandemic, and you know, I lost all that business and all that money. All my keynotes were canceled and everything else. But then I took the time and I, I hung out a lot with my family and my kids. I finished the One Belief Away book. I created the Legend Summit out of nothing, you know, and met all my uh, heroes, you know, from growing up. And and so that was amazing. But I was still struggling financially because I had lots of bills and no money coming in. And it was scary. But I decided, how do I feel safe even if I feel broke? Because you can feel broke. Even if you have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, right. which I had that experience, you know, I had like a hundred thousand dollars in cash sitting in the bank, and I felt broke. And I'm like, how's that possible? Right? Right? How's that? How can that be possible? Because you know, I would have a hundred thousand, or I'd have ten thousand in the bank, and I would feel the same feelings, right. or a million dollars in the bank, and have the same feelings. Right. Because what happens is, when you make more money, you buy more stuff, and you find yourself broke at a higher level. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so it's not the money, you know, it's it's the beliefs and our feelings of scarcity and not being safe. Mm. So we've got to focus on how do I feel safe? How do I feel comfortable in uncomfortable times? And that takes developing yourself, 
feeding your mind good information, hanging out with amazing people, and uh, you know, having a routine that constantly lifts you up so that when bad things happen, and they will, you will have a reserve to draw from. Wow, again, <laughs> such a great advice. <laughs> so, so you talk about routine before you end. I was going to ask, what is your routine? You know, like I, I use the affirmation, you know, the power of I am. I mean, what, 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 what do you use? What do you do for your routine to like really stay in the lane? Yeah. So first thing in the morning, I get up and I'm usually doing my push-ups, you know, some kind of exercise. And uh, because, you know, I'm 51 now. So if I don't, then all of a sudden my back hurts. I throw my shoulder out, itch in my head, you know, something, <laughs> something happens. I just start feeling a little rusty. And so I'm usually exercising. And while I'm doing that, I'm always listening to some video on YouTube. You know, yeah. there's so many motivational videos or a new audio book or a podcast from one of my friends or listening to your podcast, you know, now and as a, a new friend. And so, um, <laughs> you know, that's that's uh, what inspires me. So I'm feeding my mind while I'm strengthening my body. So I, I start the day doing that most days and uh, I don't do it every day, um, but most days I do. And, and so it's enough. Yeah. And um, because if you're not feeding your mind that good information, then, uh, you know, you, you start to draw on what's going on around you or how the people around you, you know, are feeling and their stress. Because most of the time when you're a, an inspirational person or a motivational speaker, you're not, you're, your family's not usually like that. You know, you don't usually marry someone like that. And so, you know, you've got to make sure that you're able to balance what's going on in your life with what's going on around those uh, that you care about. Um, but you got to have some way of filling yourself up because the rest of the time you're focused on filling everybody else up. And if you don't fill up, then you run dry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and do you, do you do it just for yourself? Or are you including your kids, your family? as well like in terms of like the routine to you know like self-development or belief development something like that um i fill myself up when i'm focusing on that whether it's the fitness now i've done things where i've got my kids to exercise with me you know and things like that uh, but or i'll go for walks with my wife but it's very important to fill yourself up and to take care of yourself because you know i find that again people are either really good at taking care of themselves but not anybody else or they're really good at taking care of everybody else but not themselves and we want to be able to get good at taking care of ourselves and others yeah. but if you have a you know a, a, a vase of water a, a, i don't know what you call it a pitcher of water right yeah. and, and you spend your day pouring into everybody else mm. and you're they're not pouring into you you've got to find a way to fill yourself up mm. right and yeah. a lot of times people walk around with empty cups saying fill me up fill me up and then they get mad if People don't fill you up in the way that you think they should. And right. so that's why it's important to focus on filling ourselves up, taking care of ourselves. It's not selfish. We yeah. get these weird beliefs that it's somehow selfish if we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we're not 100% taking care of everybody else, that's false. So fill yourself up so that you are able to have that abundance that you can then share with others. Wow. Thank you for the advice, Tim. The last two questions for you. So you you done a lot in the world already, you know, and and what is what is your legacy look like from now on? Hmm. Well, I I think that really my legacy. Two thoughts came to mind. First, I'm hoping that all the uh, the love, the support, the insights, the awareness, the emotional intelligence that my wife and I have been pouring into our two boys is going to stay with them. And that'll influence how they raise their kids and how those kids raise their kids. And so, you know, we've really taught them the importance of loving themselves and taking care of others and being respectful. And so we've poured a lot of that into our kids. And so for my family, that'll be the legacy. And then I'm hoping with all the clients that I've had the privilege of working with over the years, that teaching them how their mind works and pouring into them as well, showing how to program your mind and the power of your beliefs and that what you focus on, whatever you focus on most of the time, your life becomes. And how to use your imagination in ways that uh, allow you to turn a bad day into a better day right away. 
yeah. <laughs> right? Or as my friend Willie Jolly would say, how to turn a, a come uh, a comeback or a, a setback is a setup for a comeback, right? And how to be resilient. And so, um, you know, pouring that into my clients over the years or the the company leaders, you know, I work with a lot of companies and the best thing I hear from the managers is how they took these uh, insights home yeah. and became a better parent and a better spouse and right. a better neighbor, right? Yeah. And so, um, so I, I'm hoping that this education and heightened self awareness has helped the families that I've been able to uh, to help. You remember the the starfish on the beach? You know, mm -hmm. you've heard that with all the starfish and the little boys throwing the starfish back in the ocean and. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're not going to make a difference. I'm going to make a difference for this one. Right. And I feel like I've made a difference for thousands of people, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. When I think about it, I feel like I've already won, you know, so everything else that I experience is like a, an amazing bonus. Like being on this show and spending this time with you, Nim, is like a bonus. You know, it's just awesome that uh, we get to have this time together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. This is the bonus for us too, for me and for, for my audience too. Um, so what is the new exciting project that you're working on right now? And how can our audience reach out to you, Tim? Oh, that's a great question. So so I spent all last year interviewing the, uh, the most amazing personal development trainers on the planet. You know, all the best motivational speakers and best-selling authors. So I've interviewed all of them. And this year I'm focusing on interviewing all the CEOs that everybody's trying to get to, <laughs> you know? And so uh, I'm interviewing all these amazing CEOs that are visionary, that are people-centric, that are, um, you know, very culture-focused, uh, that are running, you know, several hundred million dollar companies mm -hmm. and, uh, and understanding how they're thinking and how they're working with their people and building their culture up post-COVID. And so, um, so if you know somebody that is a really amazing CEO like that, then I would love to uh, uh, have a conversation and perhaps interview, interview them for my How to Be Mesmerizing podcast. So mm -hmm. that'll be awesome. And then I'm just finishing up uh, my next uh, round of One Belief Away books. I've got a series of uh, topics that I'm focusing on. So I'm working on that. And then uh, who knows what will happen from there. Um, I'm excited. We'll see what happens. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And I will post your, your website um, in the description as well. Yes. Well, Tim, such a great honor to be spending time with you. Thank you so much for being here and, and share really, for me, this is really deep advice um, for us, not just like, you know, think positive, but really sometimes we don't have to be too hard for ourselves, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. It doesn't matter what shows up. What matters is how you show up and you can show up resourceful, confident, happy, playful. You can show up any way you want once you realize that that's a choice. And when you do that, you can focus. It doesn't matter on where you've been. What matters is where you're headed. So let's focus together on making the rest of your life the best of your life. Thank you so much, Tim, for being here. Thank you. Thank you.